Assalamu alaikum everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be a pretty different video filmed on my brand new camera. Um, this is going to be a foundation declutter. Now, due to the lens that I'm using, I can only move so far back. So I will move this big box out of the way before just showing you how many foundations I've got in this large acrylic box. Basically too many that I now need to sort through, get rid of some of them, tell you what I love about them, tell you if I repurchase and just start clearing out my life really. I decided that I'm not gonna talk about some of the foundations I've already used up and essentially I'm gonna pull out one foundation at a time. So let's start with this duo from Charlotte Tilbury. So we have got the Charlotte Tilbury Wonder Glow over here and then we also have the Charlotte Tilbury Light Wonder in the shade seven. This stuff is about 40 pounds and it's what she used to swear by. Now in 2018, she came out with something slightly different, but this is the base that she used to always talk about and say it was amazing. This is what it looks like on the back of my hand. There is no doubt that it is a beautiful base, but is it worth the 40 pound price tag? I'm not so sure. As you can see, or I don't know if you can tell, but I really haven't used a lot of it. I've used about maybe a quarter out of the whole bottle. And for me, it's something that I definitely could live without. So based on that, I would not be repurchasing it because I think there are better items out there. It's nice, it's just not a must have. The Light Wonder Foundation, this is in the shade 7, like I said, is definitely a summer shade for me. It is quite a liquidy consistency. As you can see, I've not used it in a while because obviously I'm using my lighter colours, but it's very watery and I do like this. I think it is a great shade for when I've got a bit more sun. I have to say I prefer another tinted moisturiser above this, the NARS one. I think that one's better, it gives you a bit more coverage and it also has SPF. This one has SPF 15, so it's, again, it's okay. It's not a must have for me, but it is a beautiful addition to my foundation collection. I don't know that I'd be running out to repurchase it though. The next foundation in this video is going to be the Nip and Fab foundation. Now this is in the shade 20. I really, really, really enjoy this. this it's 30 millilitres even though it's tiny, plastic bottle, perfect for travelling and I think that it gives you a really really good coverage. So I'm just going to put a little bit on the back of my hand. As you can see it's more yellow than that Charlotte Tilbury one so I feel like it matches me better regardless of the time of year it is and it definitely gives you a good medium coverage. The finish as well, it's not too matte, but it's not too dewy. It's very much a satiny sort of lovely natural skin kind of finish and it's very easy to manipulate. You can put a bit of oil in there to make it a bit more glowy and dewy or you can make it more matte. So this is a winner for me. I would repurchase this. I'd recommend it to anyone who's looking for a good affordable foundation. And they also have a lightener and a darkener as well in their range, which is so fantastic. So if you can't quite find your perfect shade for any foundation, not just for this one, then you can get that and adjust as need be. Okay, moving on to a very high-end foundation. This is the Dior Air Flash, and I have it in the shade 301, which is typically the shade I am for all their foundations. I was so curious about this, and I picked it up half because of an experience I had on their counter. The makeup artist in Birmingham, he used it on my skin, and I felt like it looked absolutely incredible. I have to say though, since buying this, I've hardly used it. It is quite messy, it's quite difficult to work with, and for me, the coverage is very light actually. So the times I would use this is when I've already applied a light, light layer of foundation, and I've done my concealing and my correcting, and then I just want to make sure that my skin is looking totally flawless. Then I'll go in with the layer of this on top. I find it quite difficult to build up, although you can build it up, it just takes more patience. And I definitely would recommend if you do get this, you use it with a brush. Again, because of the lack of use, for me, this is not one that I definitely always need in my collection. Of course, I'm going to use it up, I'm not going to get rid of it, but I do think that it's not an absolute must-have for me. I'll just show you guys the colour. So it's literally a spray bottle. Got some on my background there. <laughs> As you can see, it's a decent colour. It's not very yellow. Your foundations never tend to lean too yellow. 
but it does work and the coverage is super light as you can see but it does give it a beautiful soft airbrush look as the name would suggest so I would give this probably um, a 7 out of 10 not a must have for me a must have is like an 8.5 out of 10 <laughs> the next foundation another high end one this is the Makeup Forever Ultra HD stick foundation and I have this in the shade Y365 which is the same colour as I had the Ultra HD liquid foundation. Now I have to say when I first purchased this I really just could not get along with it. I found it difficult to work with, I found it just didn't sit well on my skin but I think I've realised that you really personally for me I really have to work this in with a brush so I just swipe it onto my skin like so and then I will use a brush to really work it into the skin and then set it quite well. I like this, I have been using it more recently than I was when I first got it and I do really like this, I think the colour match for me is fantastic. Y365 in Makeup Forever is literally my perfect tone which I love. Unlike the dual ones, it, they do yellow tones very very well. I don't love it more than the liquid one though, it's a, a medium to buildable coverage and I will use it up but I will not be repurchasing. The next product in my big foundation box is the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless filter and I have this in the shade 4. Now this is one of her new releases for 2018 and it's kind of a step up of the Wonder Glow like I was saying. This has beautiful glass packaging, it looks very luxurious, it's cheaper than Wonder Glow as well and it has a doe foot applicator very similar to the Tarte Shape Tape. You can obviously put it on the back of your hand or you can swipe it straight onto your skin because it is just me who uses this I put it straight on my skin. And then to show you what it looks like, let's try a little bit here. So it has a very, very pretty golden sheen and you blend it in and it leaves your skin looking pretty beautiful. I have worn this alone without any foundation before and found that the finish was really, really gorgeous. Um, but I have worn it underneath foundation and I feel like it does actually prolong the life or the time that your foundation stays on so I would consider picking this up again and it's not too expensive for a primer it's not too bad obviously all prices will be listed on the screen or down below I would give this um, an 8 out of 10 I quite like this the next foundation is the Fenty Beauty foundation by Rihanna I got this towards the end of last year and I have it in the shade 290 I've got a full review on this on my blog and a demo I really like this. It's definitely a matte foundation, but it's matte and not flat. I find it blends in really well, and the lasting power of this is fantastic. I think some people who don't like it, they probably do tend to apply a bit too much, and that's a trick. You shouldn't apply too much. You just need to apply a little bit, work it into your skin. I personally prefer using a damp sponge for this, and then see how much more you need. It does set pretty quickly, and the colour that it is right now on the back of my hand will deepen up slightly because as it dries, it dries slightly darker. So it doesn't exactly oxidise, but it does dry a little bit darker. Um, I haven't found that I look a totally different shade an hour later. I'm just aware that this colour right now is going to adapt. But yeah, this is a really, really nice base. As you can see, it's definitely a medium to full coverage and you can look pretty cakey if you don't work this in well with a damp sponge. They obviously recommend a brush as well but personally I prefer using this with a sponge and I use it for the days where I feel like my skin needs a little bit of extra help and it just isn't looking its best. It's not something that I would wear every single day because Alhamdulillah my skin doesn't need that kind of coverage but I think for the price it's really really good and the amount of shades there are is amazing. Okay the next foundation is the EX1 foundation and this is pretty old, I've had it for a while now, they've now changed their shade names but I have this in F200. Although you can tell that I have used up quite a bit of it, like over half of it, I don't love this foundation. Now, I like the concept of it. It's made by an Asian lady because she felt like there wasn't enough affordable foundations for people with a yellow undertone, and I love that. As you can see, it's very thick in formula. Um, so definitely more of a special occasion-y sort of foundation. Um, it's almost got a moussey texture, and the coverage is really good. Now, if you can tell the difference between this one and this one, I don't know how well you can see it, but this is EX1, this is Fenty, 
This one is more yellow, definitely. So if you're somebody who struggles to get a yellow tone foundation and you don't want to spend a ton of money, either go for Nipple Fab, Nip and Fab or EX1. Personally, when I do use this, I like to mix in something that's a little bit more illuminating or glowy or a little bit of an oil to make it glide on better and look better. It's not terrible it's definitely like a 7.5 but it's not something that i'm going to rush out and repurchase personally um however i would still recommend you guys try it if you are looking for a similar sort of foundation and you struggle to get your shade match the next foundation is the nasha glow this is one of my first ever high-end foundations and i have to say i absolutely adore it still to this day i had the shade stromboli and i will say that i repurchased stromboli this year and I feel like it's gone darker for some reason. When I bought Shambroli a few years ago, it was definitely a bit lighter and a bit more yellow. However, this still works really well. I do tend to go up a shade or two anyway to match my hands. Um, and when you wear hijab, it doesn't matter too much what shade you wear because no one can see under your neck. <laughs> anyway, this has got a medium coverage. It is buildable. It is a sheer glow. So it is mostly matte, but it does give you a little bit of a glowy finish. The reason why I love it so much is because it lasts very well. First of all, it lasts very well. Secondly, it looks great on my skin. Thirdly, it works well with other makeup. You know, it doesn't matter what concealer I'm wearing, it doesn't matter what powder I'm wearing, it will just still provide me a really nice base. And it's one of my go-tos. I adore this. This, for me, is a 10. I can't think of it in any way it can be improved, personally. Um, I have reviewed this on my blog before, and I have been loving this for years and years and years, and I still love it. So, yeah. Hold on, Nars. Talking about NARS, this is an absolutely filthy bottle of the NARS All Day Luminous Weightless Foundation. And again, this is in the shade Stromboli. I just have not been able to get on with this foundation. As you can see, first of all, it came with a pump. My, my pump broke, which has not only made it extremely messy and gross to even contemplate using, but it's also made it quite difficult to use. Now I'm going to wipe the back of my hand and just show you guys what this looks like. So this is Stromboli in the All Day Luminous Weightless. Ooh. It is very watery. There you go. If I just put my hand down, you can see it will run down my hand. And it's supposed to be watery but provide loads of coverage, which it does. As you can see, it's super, super yellow. I found that this was more yellow than sheer glow, almost verging on to am I a human or am I a Simpson kind of yellow. Um, but more than that, really, the problem that I've had with this when I've used it is that it is always, always, always breaking up on me. So no matter what primer I use, no matter what powder I use, no matter how I prep my skin, a few hours later, it would just start breaking up around the nose. And there's just an ingredient in this that my skin does not get on with. Plus the shade isn't great either. So this is sadly the first foundation that I'm going to be chucking in the bin and definitely will not be repurchasing. It's a shame because a lot of people love this, but you know, not every foundation can work for every person. So moving on to another one for Makeup Forever. This is actually a discontinued foundation now. And if you guys watch Kathleen Light as much as I do, you will know this is her all time favorite foundation. I've used about half of it and for a while I really loved it and when I did the review of it, which I will link down below, you can tell that I loved it. However, if I just give this a shake up, this shade, which is, oh, which is rubbed off, but I will leave it on screen because I know I have it written down somewhere. This shade is just too beige for me and although I can, as I said before, I can get away with wearing not as yellowy sort of tones, this just doesn't do it for me. As you can see, it's a bit too pinky, it doesn't look great, um, but I did really like the finish of this. It's a very dewy, natural coverage foundation. I know a lot of people couldn't get behind this texture because it's almost bitty and you have to really whack it into the skin. They have got a new version now, which I haven't got around to picking up, but I think I'm actually gonna be getting rid of this because realistically, I've had this sitting here for about a year now where I've not actually picked it up and used it, so, I'm not going to use it in 2019 and there's no point in me sort of holding on to it. Hopefully the new version is better. We might be able to see in 2019. I'm just trying not to hoard as much makeup. I'm going to try and use this makeup up first and then, you know, try new things out. Okay, talking about face and body foundations, we have the Dior face and body, which I did a half an hour review on. <laughs> yes, it was a long one, but 
This is a brand new release from their new alone, which is designed for sort of younger people, working people, that sort of thing. It's cheaper than a regular line and I absolutely love this. I have this in the shade 3W0, which is three warm olive. And I honestly adore this. It's got a liquidy formula. Oh my goodness. And sometimes it splats out. I don't know if you can, no, the camera didn't catch that. But you have to be careful when you pour this out because it does splat out sometimes. If I just pour a little bit onto my hand. This is definitely a summery shade for me. I could still get away with it in winter, but it is more warm, warm, more on the warm side. But I love this. It has got a very, very gorgeous medium coverage. It's, the finish is really what gets me. It's got a very I wake up like this. My skin looks fantastic. Um, and it just evens out my skin tone really well. And I don't feel like I have to use a lot of it. But as you can tell, it does have quite a medium coverage. So it doesn't hold back on the coverage. There are some more liquidy face and body type of foundations, they do lack coverage. This does not, and the longevity is really good too. I will obviously leave the full link of the review down below if you're interested in this. Now this is for sure one of my favourite dual foundations. I've only spoken about two so far, but this is definitely one of my favourites. So yeah, I would give this a 8.5 out of 10, and I am definitely going to be repurchasing it because I use it a lot. Coming back to NARS now, we have the NARS Velvet Matte Skin Tint. What I love about this is it has SPF 30 and it is definitely matte. So this is designed for warmer climates when you're going on a holiday and you want a base that will give you a little bit of sun protection but will also give you some good coverage. It has got more of a thicker formula than the regular Tinted Moisturiser which sadly I don't have here to show you because I used it up and I talked about it in empties. But it definitely has more of a thicker formula and it definitely still provides very good coverage. It's a medium to almost full. You could build this up to four if you wanted to. I had the same shade as I always use St. Moritz, which is a really lovely match. You can hardly tell on my hand that I've got it on. But as you can see, it's covered up all the veinage on my hand. And I love this for, like I said, when I'm in a warmer climate, when it is a summer time, and I want a base that will last all day long and that will just stay in place and give me good coverage. It's worth noting that the SPF is PA plus 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 which means it's actually real SPF and not just thrown in on the label and yeah I just think this is a really good base um, it's supposed to give you a soft matte finish and I agree with it I think it really does that the difference between this and sheer glow to me is I feel like sheer glow is better for when you're really wanting your skin to look amazing and have a little bit of luminosity and it's more of a for me it's more of a I made an effort and you can tell I'm wearing makeup sort of foundation this guy is more of a daily ish like when you want to maybe cover some blemishes or redness or discoloration um and you want a bit of sun protection as well but you don't want to worry about getting oily and that sort of thing this is better for those occasions so I would give this a 9 out of 10 and I would repurchase it just like I'd repurchase the tinted moisturizer because on the whole, NARS do bases really well. There's only a few that I've not tried from them, but that I definitely do want to try in the future. Like I said, I just need to use up what I've got first. Okay, the next foundation I have is another drugstore one. This is a Bourjois Healthy Mix foundation, and I have this in the shade 54. Bourjois is probably one of my favorite brands for foundation for, from the drugstore, um, but they don't tend to do shades too well. They definitely don't cater for enough deep skin tones. Even their yellow ones can be a little bit off, but on the whole, I do really like this. This is like a brand new bottle. Um, it's definitely more of a winter shade for me. It's way lighter than all the other ones you've seen, um, and it's not the yellowest, as you can tell. This is fine for mixing in with other foundations when some of them are too dark. As you can see, you might be able to tell that a lot of my foundations tend to be more aimed towards um, summertime. So this is okay. On the whole, I think it's a decent foundation for the price. Would I repurchase it though? Probably not. I think I would wear this if it was in a pinch or... Um, I just don't think this is amazing. It's, the, the, the longevity is decent, it says 16 hours, it's decent, it, I would say it lasts very well for about 8 to 9 hours um, and 
I would probably give this a 6 out of 10, mainly because of the lack of good shade ranges. But for a cheaper foundation, it's decent. However, now I do really think that in 2018-19, we've got a lot more choices and a lot more colour choices available to us. So, yeah, I would not be repurchasing this. But I'm going to either try and use this up or I might pass this on to a cousin who's fairer than me, actually, because what's the point of keeping so many foundations? I just don't know. Okay, we are nearly done now, thank goodness. But this is a Jouer Essential High Coverage Foundation. This is a pretty new foundation to my collection in 2018, and I absolutely love it. Now, the only issue I have really is that I can't find a perfect shade. I have here the shade Cameo, which is too light, and Latte, which is too dark. I got them both when they were on sale, because randomly sometimes Beauty Bay give you like 10 pounds off these. They're pretty expensive, but the coverage is amazing. Honestly, so, so good. You only need a drop, which I know a lot of foundations claim. This is one of those rare ones which you actually only do need a drop to take your whole face and transform it into a blank canvas. And it has a very flawless skin-like finish. Definitely matte, but not drying at all. Um, I just wish there was a shade in between, which is a bit more yellow, which would be my perfect shade. At the moment, I've been using this and using the e.l.f. Um, foundation adjuster in yellow, which Safia Tasneem recommended to everybody, and we all went crazy for it, because that makes any foundation more yellow toned. So that's a really good tip if you don't feel like you can, you know, if you love the formula of a foundation already, but it's just not the right shade, that's a really good thing to try and do, is get one of those and just add it into the mix already. It doesn't change the, the actual formula too much, I found. It just makes it better to wear on your skin. So I do really like these. I would give them an 8 out of 10. The longevity is really good. The coverage is amazing. And um, yeah, the, it's all great. They're just the shade range is kind of difficult to pick, especially because you don't find many Jure counters around. I don't even know if I've ever seen one before. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a hassle to get. Okay guys, that's the end of that video. I have not appeared in it at all because I'm in my pyjamas and I'm in a massive clearing out mode. I hope you guys found that helpful just to see an overview of my foundations. I didn't get rid of too many, but I am nearly through most of them. Like a lot of them I've made a good dent in and I'm not planning to buy any more foundations for a really long time until I've used these up. So if you've got any questions about any of the foundations I mentioned, definitely leave them down below. And if you've got any that you'd recommend to me, then let me know. I'll see you in my next one. Bye! <laughs>